Welcome to Smart Poker Study, the podcast dedicated to helping you earn more money, study more effectively, and be 1% better every day. I'm your host, Sky Matsuhashi. In last week's episode number 240, I shared 11 ways you're losing money and one simple solution for each. So let's get to work, people! It's poker study time, y'all. Thank you so much for sharing the show with your friends. I really do appreciate it. That word of mouth is a killer for uh, spreading the word, obviously. And I also want to thank my newest Patreon supporter. His name is Jonathan Mitchell. You know, I love creating the show for all of you, and it really warms my heart when people like Jonathan and every other Patreon supporter, when they jump aboard this train by going to patreon.com slash study, choosing their level of support, and then they get to it, right? I love it. So just uh, yesterday, I released the podcast reward for June that's called Discovering Poker's Fantasy Land. And the goal of that podcast is to get you to the most profitable poker situation situation more often. Uh, I also released the $10 reward for insiders. That's a, a, a it was a review of 12 two bet calling hands so that you could see the kind of things that I consider before I make a pre-flop call. Alrighty, so once you begin your support on Patreon, you'll get the current month's reward as well as access to the archive of patron-only content. So for just a few dollars a month, which is less than one buy-in for most of you, you will be supporting the show and you'll receive some valuable poker content in return. So go to patreon.com slash smartpokerstudy to start your support. Alrighty, welcome to the second episode in the month of profits. There is so much that you can do to improve your poker skills when you're away from the felt, and I'm going to discuss my three favorites today. They are hand reading, daily study, and reviewing game tape. I'm absolutely in love with these three uh, tactics because they've helped me improve my game more than anything else I've ever done. And I know they will do the exact same for you. So before we get to those three things, here is the challenge. Challenge! Here's my challenge to you for this episode. Start doing daily hand reading exercise right meow. Strive to turn this into a habit by doing it every day for the next 30 days or even more. If you need to see how it's done, check out my 66 days of hand reading videos on YouTube. Now it's your turn to take action and do something positive for your poker game. Oh, that's it now. Get out there and be somebody. Go write a book. Please visit the show notes page for everything I discussed today, along with screenshots and links at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 241. And when you go there, you'll see some videos demonstrating how I do my hand reading practice. Okay, it's time. Gambate. And now for our feature presentation. So let's talk about hand reading first. My number one off the felt study technique or poker skill improvement technique. So first, uh, what is hand reading? Hand reading is all about putting our opponent on a logical range of hands based on their actions. Then we make the most positive EV decision based on our read. Now, I know that you've seen pros like Daniel Negreanu on television. They put their opponent on one exact ham. You know, you have seven, six suited. But it's not really, it's not realistic to think that we can do that all the time. Instead of putting them on a single hand, we put them on a range of hands. And this range is all the hands that they can logically be holding based on their actions up to that point. And as a very simple example, if a loose aggressive opponent just called from the button preflop, they most likely do not have pocket queens or better, and they don't have ace king either in their range. But if they were the preflop raiser from the button, they would have these hands in their range along with plenty of other hands, right? So your job as a thinking poker player is to narrow their preflop range as the hand progresses. You will take this range and determine how well it interacts with the board, and you'll choose exploitative plays based on your reasoning of how strong their hand likely is. So how will hand reading help to improve your profits? Well, hand reading is the most important single skill for a poker player to learn. It'll help you avoid difficult spots. It'll help you fold when necessary so that you don't give value to your opponents. And it will help you gain more value from them. 
The more precise you are with your opponent's ranges, the better decisions you'll be making. And basically, all of that means is that hand reading skills equals profits. So for those of you who've never done hand reading before, how do you do it mm, the most simply, right? How do you get started with it? Well, you can, if you want, uh, listen to a, an entire series of podcasts I did on hand reading. They're episodes 149, 151, 152, 156, and 158. A lot of episodes right there, a lot to listen to. But right now, I want to give you a real quick, nitty-gritty four steps to get started today. So step one is to get Flopzilla. Flopzilla is a range analysis software, and it helps you quickly build a range of hands and determine how well it interacts with the board. You can try using a different software like Equilab or even pencil and paper if you want, but they just don't compare, right? Uh, it just Flopzilla is the best I've been using it for a really long time, and to see it in action, I put day 13 of my 66 days of hand reading. I embedded that video in the show notes page for today, so please check that out. And Flopzilla, you can get it for just 25 bucks, and it's totally worth it. Just go to Flopzilla.com, make the purchase, start using it. All right, step two in simple hand reading is choose an important hand that went to showdown. So filter in your poker database for a situation that you want to improve your skills around. Do you want to three bet bluff better? Maybe C bet for value better or even make river bluffs? Well, filter for those situations, scroll through the hands and find one with significant street by street action. Step three is to assign your opponent a preflop range based on their actions and statistics. So you've pulled that hand up that you want to do hand reading practice with. Take what you know about that situation and their player history and their statistics and build a range that makes sense. So you'll give them a different range if they three bet you versus calling you or even limping and then calling your isolation raise. Also, you'll build a different range based on their related statistic. A person who calls two bets 30% of the time will have a much wider range than somebody who calls only 10% of the time. And they would also have a different range if they called in the cutoff versus calling in the big blind. Now, assigning ranges for your opponents, it takes a lot of practice. But as you're working through this over 30 or 60 or 90 days every day, one hand, you'll get tons of practice assigning ranges. So don't worry about being perfect right off the bat. And the final step, step four, is to narrow that range through the streets based on their actions and statistics. So as the hand progresses, you're going to use Flopzilla to filter for different hand strengths that would continue to the next street. So if they check called preflop, you might include all pairs and draws, right? But what if they check raised? Maybe you'll include just top pair hands and the best draws like nut flush draws and open end draws. But you can also add on the two pair hands, the sets, even straights and flopped flushes if those are possible. This is the point where you're really going to have to get into the mind of your opponent and try to use the same logic that they would use as they play hands. And of course, take notes on what you learned from each hand reading exercise, and also add any player notes that will help you exploit this player in the future. All right, so that's the quick and easy nitty gritty four point way to do hand reading. Next, let's get to my second favorite off the felt tactic, daily study. So daily study is developing a habit of off the felt work to improve your on the felt results. And take it from me, it's a habit totally worth developing. And I know it sounds easy, right? Studying 20 minutes or more per day, but it's something that most of you know, <laughs> it can easily slip out of your daily routine after just a few days. Now this off the felt study, this daily study, it can take on many forms, right? Database reviews where you review like big losing hands or difficult situations or tagged hands. You could do uh, practicing different poker math strategies like outs and odds, break even bluffs, uh, ICM, that kind of stuff. Uh, hand reading can be your daily form of study as well. Maybe consuming content from coaches like podcasts, videos, articles, books, and whatnot, or even watching game tape from a prior session. Those are all ways to study off the felt. Now, it's pretty obvious how studying off the felt is going to help improve your profits. You're basically adding new strategies to your skill set. 
and working to refine the current strategies that you already know. So let's say you're kind of a decent three bet bluffer, right? If you do some off the felt studying, review three bet bluffing hands, maybe look at some successful hands that your opponents three bet bluffed with, um, or even unsuccessful hands, right? Uh, look up some videos, some podcasts about three bet bluffing. As you watch those, take notes on the things that you're learning so that you can implement those on the felt for yourself. By working off the felt on your skills, you're going to improve your on the felt game, which will inc improve your profits. Now, to help you do daily study, I have a very simple three-part plan. Part one is to make a plan. Part two is consume. Part three is act. So first, when it comes to making a plan, uh, you need to select a time to study every day. If you have an eight to five job, you can choose to wake up 30 minutes early and study during then or study during your lunch break or before you go to bed at night. Just make sure you choose a time that works well for you and uh, you won't be distracted. The other part to plan for is your study topic for the week. Sure, you can bounce from three bet pots to pre-flop ranges to board textures to donk bets to outs and odds math. You can do that all in one week, right? but you're better off studying each of those topics over multiple days and five weeks total. The second part is to consume. Now, this is where you'll spend at least 20 minutes doing one of the off-the-felt forms of study that I mentioned earlier, or something entirely new that you want to do, right? Take notes on what you learned and think of ways that you can practice it on the felt. And speaking of practicing on the felt, that's part three, which is ACT. This is where you actively practice what you're learning off the felt. Doing something is the best way to learn it. So put it into practice in your next play session. And maybe you're practicing on three betting or C betting or math skills. Focus on those in your session. Stick around because just after the break, I'm going to talk about reviewing game tape. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash smartpokerstudy. They have over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. And of course, they have my first three books, How to Study Poker Volume 1, Volume 2, and Preflop Online Poker. Of course, Preflop Online Poker is the most expensive book, so choose that as your first free book. And then you can wait till the next month and get How to Study Poker Volume 1 as your next free one. Or just purchase it because it's a bit cheaper than that Preflop Online Poker. But once again, get your free trial, audibletrial.com slash smartpokerstudy, so you can start learning from audiobooks. And a few shout outs today. Oliver Nolte purchased Poker Tracker 4 through my affiliate link. Um, and later on, he sent me an email like the next day. He said, I love, 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 love my new Poker Tracker 4. I'm glad to hear that, Oliver. Um, he went to smartpokerstudy.com slash poker tracker 4. One word. Uh, the number four at the end right there. And when he sent me his confirmation email, I sent him my smart HUD. He uploaded it, started using it, and hopefully he's exploiting those opponents. So thank you very much again, Oliver. And two webinar purchases this past week. Getting the most from Poker Tracker 4 was purchased by Niall Barnaby. And effective HUD use webinar was purchased by Tommy. You can get links to these two webinars as well. They're both over one hour long. So much good information to help you improve your game. And for both of these, improve your studies as well. For more Off the Felt Profits. Alrighty, back to class, poker people. So let's discuss reviewing game tape. Now, you've heard me talk about game tape plenty of times because it's my number one recommended study technique that people just don't ever do. I'm sure you've, um, many of you listening right now, you've heard me mention game tape maybe, let's just pick a number, seven times in the podcast within the past year. And you probably have not done even one yet. So I highly recommend that you jump on the game tape bandwagon. If you want a full episode dedicated to game tape, go listen to episode 203, and there's also a link to it in the show notes, right? So what are game tape reviews? First off, recording game tape for your play session, it's great because it helps you stay focused on the decisions that you're making. But reviewing the game tape after your session, preferably the next day, that's how I like to do it, it's just as helpful. 
This is where you simply sit down and you watch yourself play. So being away from the felt helps you see things objectively. You don't have any money on the line, nor emotions, nor maybe like fatigue affecting you, right? It's just you and the game tape, and the tape doesn't lie. You're going to catch some interesting mistakes, right? Um, and with that off-the-felt objectivity, you're going to notice things that you've never noticed before. Maybe who's that player seated at your left, and who's at the table in general? What are the stack sizes in play? Who's a great target to steal from, and who is likely to 3-bet steal from you? And why did you bluff so small on that flop? And why did you call that obvious river value bet? In the moment, you might not be able to catch all of these different things because you have so much running through your mind. But like I said, that off the felt objectivity is gonna allow you to see more in your sessions. So reviewing game tape really helps to improve your profits because uh, you're able to catch and fix so many mistakes. By doing this, you're basically saving money, which just increases your profits because in poker, a penny saved is a penny earned. So you're basically using game tape reviews as a leak plugging strategy. Now, in the beginning, you might not catch any mistakes, or you just might not know what you're looking for. But eventually, you'll catch a mistake, or you'll see an exploit that you can make on a player. Once you find it the first time, you'll subconsciously start looking for it off and on the felt, then you'll catch another mistake and another one and another exploit. You'll begin working either consciously or subconsciously to correct these mistakes as you play. And eventually, you won't be making those mistakes anymore, but you'll continually find new ones. So bam, removing these mistakes from your game, it will cut your losses and improve your profits. And how do you uh, start reviewing your game tape in the simplest way? Well, you got to record a session as you speak through your actions, then watch the game tape during your study time the next day. Easy peasy, right? It's like anything else, really. The more you do it, the more you'll get out of it also. So once again, go check out episode number 203, where I explain game tape in detail. The Lord works in mysterious ways, don't I? A good day. Bye, me. Bye, Ukiyo. This episode isn't complete until you head to the show notes page at smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 241. Go there for screenshots and links and some of the videos that I talked about being embedded there today. There is so much in today's show notes, it's really worth your time. And when you go there, you can discover ways in which you can support the podcast to keep me keeping on. Thank you so much for listening today. If you enjoyed this episode, please tell a friend, you know, that word of mouth is incredible, or you can even leave a glowing five-star review on your favorite podcatching app. If you can type or say the word smart poker study, you can find me on Alexa, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. Alrighty, poker people, in the next episode, number 242, I'll hit you with a profit-related Q&A episode. Word of mouth is the best advertising, so thank you very much for sharing the show with other poker people. Your sharing and caring is what helps us grow. Until next time, study smart, play much, and make your next session the best one yet.